Hello and welcome. This Bernina 1000 designer sewing machine is not driving. There's no power to the motor. There's power to the machine but there's, the machine's not turning when I put my foot on the foot controller. You may have seen the assessment video that uh, showed this problem and it becomes obvious in that video there that uh, there is no, uh, no go. Just very, very seldomly when I put my foot down, the motor would kick very slightly. I'll go through some troubleshooting procedures here uh, to try and rectify that problem. I can't stress enough in these videos really where I'm getting in behind uh, the covers here that the plug, the power plug should always be unplugged from the machine when you're working in this area. There is live wires in behind here. So just please make sure that um, you do that, unplug the machine. And um, if you want to see how to get to this point here, take a look at the assessment video where I show taking the how to take the panels off and, and whatnot. But we may not even need to go this far. First of all, I want to check the uh, foot controller. So I want to do some basic checks really. In the assessment video, I've checked the uh, motor brushes, the carbon brushes here. They check out fine, no problem there whatsoever. The, there's power to the, to the bulb. So I know there's power getting to the machine. So there must be power getting from you know, the power plug here to the, uh, this here. But maybe there's a problem with the foot controller. So let's have a quick look at the uh, foot controller there. So we'll probably want to, you know, start with some of the basics just by checking continuity to the, you know, from the power lead here to these plugs. Just I've got my multimeter in continuity mode, so when we have a connection, we should get the beep. Okay, so on the power plug here, yours uh, may look different to this. And um, you know, obviously, whenever you're dealing with the uh, power plug and the foot controller, you want to have the power disconnected from the mains because there is a risk of electric shock. Let's check the uh, phase connection here. So the phase is this right hand position here when looking at the plug directly on uh, with the flat of the plug on the bottom and the chamfered parts of the plastic casing on the top here, just like that. So we've got phase there and the neutral is the second in from the right, this one here, second in. And I, I know there's, you know, I know that that those connections are fine because the bulb is running. So, you know, if the bulb wasn't running, well then there's either a problem here or with the switch or some of the circuitry. Uh, okay, so the next thing to do is to check the foot controller plug for continuity. There should be a phase there. Yep, I've got the probe on the phase of the power plug and again with the flat of the uh, foot controller plug on the bottom and the chamfers there on the top. We've got the right hand position is phase. So this is phase coming down to the foot controller. So this connector here, second from the left, that doesn't actually plug into anything at all in the machine. There's no terminal there. So the middle connector here that connects to the neutral of the power pin there, power plug. So we've got neutral here, and on the left there they've got feed on the from the machine. The plug seems fine, the power flex seems fine, everything seems to be connected there. So I've actually got a sneaky suspicion that this problem might be caused by the a problem with the uh, foot controller here. Now there's a couple of things that can go wrong uh, with these foot controllers. One is that I've got a couple of little carbon brushes which you'll see later on. Uh, they could 
possibly wear out or even um, break I guess they're quite fragile so you know if the foot controllers had a very hard knock or something like that um, or dropped from a from a height there's a possibility those little carbon brushes may have broken or as I say they, they may have worn out the other problem I see with these foot controllers is there's a capacitor in here that fails and it can partially fail also um, so when it partially fails you might notice that um, the machine will run but when you put your foot down you put your foot down a little bit nothing happens you go a little bit further nothing happens nothing happens and then a little bit further and the machine takes off at full speed or close to full speed um, that's an indication that the capacitor in here is breaking down if that capacitor fails completely well then um, I've seen situations where we have this problem where the machine has no power whatsoever well it, sorry it gets it has power there's uh, power to the bulb and everything but there's nothing when you put your foot down nothing happens so there's a couple of things to look for um, so we'll start by just removing the uh, these hinge there's two hinges here the hinge caps I guess you call them and uh, four screws so start by removing those I'm just gently holding the um, lower half down a little bit so that it doesn't pop up and strain the you know these this hinge here is loose um, so I'm just holding it so it doesn't sort of pop up and lever on this side here causing a little bit of strain on this side so just gently holding that and there we go I'll try and show you the guts on here so you can see that white it's hard to get on camera here there's a little grey piece that comes from the top of the foot controller and latches down over a white piece that's the part that's got the carbon brushes attached so we want to try and unlatch those and if you move the unit slide the top slide the top there I think you can probably just about unlatch the the latch there you might just need to give it a little bit of a helping hand with a screwdriver there don't use too much force be gentle and patient with that because there's parts in here that are easily broken off there now and then just gently remove separate the two parts there just the two springs locate onto posts down on the top of the so the top half of the foot controller and also posts down in here and here where the springs locate now I'm going to have a close look and see whether those carbon brushes are still intact and not worn out because there's no point taking this apart if we don't have to and I can see that the carbon brushes are okay they look fine I'll get you a closer look here if I can get the light right so you might be able to see down in here there are little carbon brushes that run up and down this surface here one there and one there now as that raises up it creates more resistance now they're not worn out and and they're not broken so I'm tempted just to leave those as is that capacitor there is looking a little bit dodgy and I you know I'm wondering if that potentially is all all that's causing the problem here so swapping that capacitor out is actually quite a, um, a good thing to do to sort any um, potential issues out and you can tell just by visually inspecting that there is a problem there next thing to do is to remove this black cover here just the three uh, flathead screws we 
actually have more than one capacitor here but these are notoriously bad at failing just this capacitor here we need to carefully remove this slide here now the little brushes that are pushing up against that slide here they're sprung loaded so they're wanting to push this way and as soon as I take this here out they're going to ping out actually I'm just looking to see whether we can um, replace this capacitor without actually taking this board out but I think it's going to be too close to this part here although if I remove this bit might be able to scoot another um, capacitor in there without actually having to take this out. So I think if we get this plastic retainer off here. One side off. Gently lift that away. Okay. And I think I can get my soldering iron down in there and remove this without removing this slider here. But I thought if you're doing this job, uh, you go ahead and do uh, replace the capacitor. I'll show you that in a second. But I, I thought for completeness, I will show you, um, you know, how to remove this slider and reinstall it. I'll turn the whole unit around so you get a better look there. So the two terminals that I need to desolder here, that one and that one for the capacitor. And if I remove this here, you'll see the little carbon brushes. Now I'm just going to carefully just make sure that they don't catch on anything as you're sliding the slide up otherwise um, it'll put sideways pressure on them and it'll just snap them they're very fragile just be aware when you are taking that this slider here out that this little arm here sits under this lever that's the uh, cutoff lever there if the carbon brushes aren't, you know, sticking out that far, well, then they're either worn right down or um, broken, and you can remove them. You have to be fairly careful doing this too. So if you slide it, actually, if you've got it in this orientation, if you slide that plate to the left, it just unlatches there, and we can see the springs there that will hold the little carbon brush like that so when you're replacing them just put the carbon brush and sit the carbon brush back down in the hole there with a thin end going in first like that make sure it pops out the other side there put your spring in there and then you get your plate and just sit it over the springs so that these little cutouts on the left here match up with this side here little so you can see the little pieces of plastic that protrude there go into the little so you when you um, put the plate over the little cutouts there go over these spots here and then you just you hold the uh, plate in and push it to the right and that's job done if you need to replace those carbon brushes now let's get the capacitor off there I'm just going to gently uh, lever the capacitor there while I desolder while I heat this leg here and we should be able to just work that away there like that and do the other side It's 
three. And then we should be able to actually just lift that board. Because I can, I'll lift that board out. I think if the um, if you have to leave the board in situ and you can't pull the capacitor out far enough to get past this piece of plastic here, maybe if you get it part way out you could get a very fine pair of um, snips and just cut that leg there and once you get that leg cut then you can um, just de desolder the actual remaining leg that's there. Now these capacitors aren't polarized so they can go in any way. That is a 0 0.01 microfarad and yeah that's a reefer. Reefer brand, notoriously uh, bad for failing. You can see the cracks there's quite a crack along here. And that. Oh, there's a big crack on the back side there. So that capacitor is no good. That is a 630 volt to 300 volt. Let's see if I've got one of those. So I have one here. That's a 10 uh, nanofarad, so equivalent to 0 0.01 microfarad. Uh, class 2 capacitor 305 volt so that one will be perfect I'll just get that started there just work that work that in there like that Get some fresh solder there. Crop those legs off. Like that. That's the to replace there. So I'm hoping that this will sort out uh, a couple of problems really. One is that, you know, let's say the machine was actually working, um, you know, let's say the machine was actually running, the motor was running, more than likely would have that problem where it would be all or nothing with the foot controller because of this capacitor. But I'm also hoping that that is the cause of the, uh, the issue where the motor is not uh, running at all. So Let's just uh, see. I mean, I could do several more checks here. There could be a problem with this uh, cutoff switch here. In fact, you know, I can probably test that in circuit while we're here. Might as well. So that should be op uh, closed. Yep. And I'll pull the lever up. It should close the. Uh, sorry, it should open the circuit. Yeah, so that switch is fine. There are some other capacitors in here, they look fine. You know, they're polypropylene. That new one I've put in is a polypropylene capacitor. Everything else looks okay. I mean, there could, there could be problems with those transistors. I'm actually just going to assume that that, you know, could be the cause of the problem. And I'll put it back together. And um, if it hasn't fixed it, well then I'll delve a bit deeper into other areas. So the next part is the um, tricky part of getting the slide back into place there without damaging the carbon brushes. The key really is to not put any pressure on the brushes, sideways pressure. Any sideways pressure is going to potentially break these fragile brushes. So you want to be really careful here. I start just by placing the slider back into the rails there and then just gently ease each one of these brushes in to hook it over and onto that onto the circuit board there angle it slightly to get that one hooked on and there like that so just make sure you don't put any downward pressure on this here until those brushes are hooked over and onto that slide. Now we've just got to make sure that the switch lever here 
comes over, there we go, like that. And then that doesn't really matter where this is positioned, but the way this is designed, you'll see there's this beveled uh, piece here on this little arm. And what happens is the, the mating piece that comes down from the uh, foot controller here, the top half, that part there, that's also beveled. So when this gets pushed on, uh, that clips over that little beveled part of that slider there. But you have to be careful that it doesn't, once you do that, you have to be careful that you don't let the uh, top half go because it's going to pull this back out and allow those pins to pop out here. And then when you go and try and push down again to engage and clip that clip back in, it will um, cause those brushes to push against here and uh, snap them. So, yeah, speaking from experience. <laughs> so, that can just sit down in there. And when it's at its lowest position, you know, that allows that, that other arm piece to come down and engage with it and latch on. So let's just put this little retainer back on here. That, and then there's two little locating grooves here for the board. One there. Give that a good push down. Clip that back in. Yep. That moves up and down nice and smoothly. Put the top cover on here. There's no need to have this really tight, just enough to you know clamp this plate down nicely. It's actually easier just to um, put the springs on the locators there and then just make sure that the springs go into the top half locators there. And you can do that before you start, um, you know, pushing down to engage the slider. I'll just get these screws ready in the hinges there, just so that we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and line this up here. So I'm just getting the springs onto the spring locating posts there, like that, and then tip the whole unit over so it's upside down put the hinges on first no need to over tighten these either they are a metal insert screw I'm just nipping those up at this stage just to hold everything in position there make sure that's reasonably tight there now and it looks like everything's set to go but the you know the plastic um, latches haven't latched together here at, the, at this stage but what you do to engage that is you just push the two halves together yeah give it a good push push down in this region here and that clicks the uh, sliders together and now you can hear the micro switch activating which means the the slider in there is um, you know uh, latched and coming up to the micro switch so I'm tempted to try this now I did remove this little retaining bar here Pro probably didn't need to really do that that can just sit back into position there it just sits over like that clips down that just holds those terminals in place what we have to do is we have to Put the back cover on just for safety and also that um, engages the switches there as well i mean you, you can override those switches but um you know just just for safety's sake we'll do this i think in the meantime i'll put one screw here and uh, i think that's enough to keep things together just for a quick test yeah there's there's no live wires in this area here. I mean, there's a warning label here on the side of this. That's where the danger is and behind this panel here. 
So I think um, let's plug that cable in and we'll just put the switch on. You probably don't need to turn on, but so we've got light. We should have light. No, that's motor. That's light. So we've got power because I can see the light here on the bulb. Yep. We've got power. Fixed. So that little capacitor there is the culprit. So we're back up and running. So all that really needs to be done now is, you know, put the machine back together. Um, and if you want to know how to do that, take a look at the assessment slash buyer's guide video where I show, you know, putting the machine uh, back together there. Yeah, so I hope that um, helps you if you've, you know, got a dead uh, Benina 1000 or, uh, in fact, you know, this covers uh, quite a few different models. Uh, I think the 1005, there's, there's quite a few different models that um, use this kind of foot controller and this sort of, um, you know, electrical system. So yeah, it um, could apply to many machines. And um, yep, all it was was this uh, tiny little uh, capacitor that's failed. So um, yeah, hope you found that helpful and thank you very much for watching.